We've talked with the star of Typhoon Judy. Now we're going to talk with the director and writer, Darren Hagen. Now he is an award-winning playwright, composer, actor, television host, and that's just to name a few. He is also Canada's most notorious drag performer. In 2003, he even became the first drag queen to host a television series. Like Christopher, this guy is no ordinary man. Darren, thank you so much for it's being with so me. so good to be here today. Thank you. <laughs> now, like Christopher, you are also a Canadian boy, aren't you? Uh, yes, we met <laughs> many, many years ago. About 30 years ago, we met in Canada when we were both young, young, beautiful drag queens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you, you both still are. I haven't, I haven't seen you in drag. Uh, so. Trust me, it takes a lot to make me pretty now. <laughs> but I, I can still be very versatile. <laughs> <laughs> now, Darren, I think that this is great. You're a drag performer, but you also are so great at writing performances, writing plays. You've written 25. Thank you. Yes, and, and, and I've got three books out there as well. It, it was one of those things where um, I was looking for, I wanted to be, a, a, I, I learned how to be a drag queen, and then I wanted to take that to the theater, to the stage. And uh, there's a lot of good drag roles, uh, but I was constantly finding that directors were more interested in hiring uh, straight men to play the drag roles because it looked like more of a challenge for the straight guy to do it. And uh, I was constantly getting passed over. And there was actually a brilliant play, of course, everybody knows about it, Angels in America. I desperately wanted to play the drag queen in that one. And I got hired as the composer instead because they wanted to give it to a more experienced actor. And I sort of went, well, I'm just going to write my own. And I wrote my own play, and um, I won a couple of awards for it and then I got it published as a book and uh, that just kind of gave me the confidence to, to, to realize that I had a voice that was unique in the Canadian uh, queer theater canon and to start creating work specifically to showcase drag talents. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. So you didn't get the job, so you just created your own job. There right? you go. That's how to do it, right? <laughs> to take, just take it, take it by the, by the, the scruff of the neck and mm -hmm. wrestle it down. <laughs> okay, I like it. Now, what do you prefer? Do you prefer being behind the scenes writing or do you prefer being on stage? As I get older, I, I much prefer, uh, I, fi I find that my ego has changed. I, I, there's a certain, you know, there was decades where I needed the applause and I needed to be on stage. That has kind of passed as I got older. And, and the more I write, the more I love to, uh, to sit at my desk and actually work on, on, on the words and the text and, and the vision of creating a piece of theater from a director's point of view. So I find that uh, I've never actually studied any of this. I just kind of do it as the challenge comes up. I kind of wrestle it down and figure out how to make it work. And so that's been my, my big challenge. And um, I learned how to do drag years ago. Now I learned, then I learned how to write. Now I'm learning how to direct. And it's, it's, a, it's a brilliant journey as an artist to be able to constantly come up against new challenges. Oh, absolutely. And I wonder w what is going to be next for you, Darren? Uh, good question. I, 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 right now I'm actually working on a book of the queer history of Edmonton, which is the city I come from in Canada. Uh, it's a small prairie city where, you know, known for hockey players, Ed Wayne Gretzky came from. Uh, uh, Edmonton or played in Edmonton for the Oilers for a long time and it's a very wintry cowboy kind of place so people are always surprised to find out that there's actually a really rich drag history and a really rich history of the queer population in in Edmonton so I'm working on a big history of that right now I find that my work came along right at the time when queer history and queer theory was starting to be embraced by the academia and so my books are studied in university and stuff and so I'm kind of creating a piece right now that's perfect for that Okay, and let's talk about, of course, Typhoon, Typhoon Judy. Judy. We've That's seen a little here. tease mm -hmm. this morning and everything. It looks absolutely incredible. What was it like working with Christopher on this? Well, I mean, every time I work with Christopher, it's an amazing experience because he is the consummate professional. People talk about Judy Garland being one of those unstoppable sheer forces of talent. I would add Christopher Peterson to that list of sheer unstoppable forces of nature. Uh, he can pretty much do whatever he sets his mind to. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's also a, a very generous performer. He, he knows exactly what he wants but he, he loves c to collaborate to get that product. Um, I, uh, when uh, Christopher was actually in a play of mine in Key West a few years ago called Bitch Slap, mm -hmm. which was a big hit at the waterfront, and in Canada as well. Uh, and uh, he played Betty Davis to Randy Roberts' as Joan Crawford. And uh, uh, when the play was done, I, I said, we should create another play specifically for one of your other, you know, he's got so many beautiful characters in his, in his drag uh, icons show. And I said, who would you like to spend a whole evening as if you could pick any of your characters? And he, without hesitation, he said, Judy Garland. And I went, well, maybe we should think about writing a play for Judy Garland. And then he proceeded to tell me this beautiful idea that he had had for decades, but had never really gotten around to actually making a reality. And I realized that he had already done all the hard work of figuring out the play, mm -hmm. so we just had to write it. So it was just a matter of sitting down and finding the time to just nail it down. Well, you guys have done it. 
and everybody needs to get their tickets now for Typhoon Judy. It's the closest you'll ever come to seeing Judy Garland live on stage. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Well, thank you so much for being thank on you this so much. morning. It's been a pleasure talking with you. When I return from these messages, I'll actually be joined by the artistic director of the Waterfront Playhouse Theater, Danny Weathers. Stay with me.